Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Before we get into the video, make sure to subscribe to my channel and like the video if you enjoyed the video. It shows me you guys enjoy it and it motivates me to make more videos. So this video is going to be all about tips and tricks and all that kind of stuff to make better maps. Um, so, you know, increase your overall, uh, as like make your maps more aesthetically pleasing, basically. Um, these are kind of like the, this kind of like the workflow I go through to create my maps. Um, also, the... The assets you see in front of me right now, this little scene right here, this is an asset pack that I have for sale for like $8, you know, it, the link's in the description if you're interested, if not, it's all good, um, but I'm going to be using this asset pack as a an example of this video. Before I get into the video, I'd like to point out that I do have a Discord community channel. If you're interested, the link's in the description, you can throw in your creations, you can throw in me some suggestions for next videos, or you can be a part of the community and, you know... Um, join in, in conversations and stuff like that um once i reach 500 members we i will be doing uh, competitions to win rewards like discord nitro or a certain amount of robux and all that kind of stuff so if you're interested join up if not all good okay so the first thing i want to mention is pretty obvious but create an asset pack even if it's not like a simulator i feel like um asset packs are often kind of just aligned with a simulators and all that kind of stuff instantly but that's really not the case if you find a reference image for example that you like um there's nothing stopping you from i'm going to show a, a reference image on the screen that i'm looking at right now but there's nothing you you can straight up look at it you can see there's a castle there you need castle walls you can create a modular piece uh, of like a castle you can create a well you can create like market stands and all that kind of stuff just create your assets before you start making your scene and then you can kind of build the terrain or build whatever you want to make and then kind of just place the assets in as you see fit rather than kind of doing this whole loop around you you're like oh i forgot to make this and so now you have to go back in blender make it and then bring it back in it's a more efficient workflow and a more a less time consuming workflow to say the least once you kind of have your asset pack complete you can kind of start play you, you can create a little scene you start with the terrain first is what i would recommend create a scene uh, look at a reference image of terrain or something and then create a, a whole scene for example i have this terrain here fairly basic really small just to create a scene and then i utilized this asset pack i created uh, and basically copied and pasted all the assets on here until I created a visually appealing scene which as you can see is a fairly small scene but it's effective it fits the theme and it looks uh, really nice the next thing I'd recommend is added post processing effects into your games a lot of people kind of just you know shove either sun rays in their games or they just add a bloom effect to just kind of bring out this simulator um, feel or they kind of just change the skybox and expect the whole game to look incredible um there's a lot of different kinds of well not a lot but there's different kinds of post processing effects which are kind of overlooked you click this little plus icon next to your lighting um you also probably be a drop down menu uh you have all these post processing effects you can add your sun rays you can add your depth of field a lot of people get confused with depth of field basically it kind of uh it adds a blur based on the distance so you kind of blur out assets in, in the background to kind of create the illusion that you're kind of near sighted so you can't see too far basically um, blur effect is mostly used for uh, blurring your your screen so you can focus more on the UI basically and the bloom effect obviously makes neon colors uh, stand out more and sun rays adds sun rays onto your uh, sun which is fairly obvious and color correction is kind of adjusting colors basically so I recommend you guys use the depth of field uh, bloom sun rays just utilize these as much as possible mess around with the properties as you can see depth of field kind of blurs the screen but if you adjust the properties it kind of you can see it blurs further out now and you can kind of you know play around with the properties and create some really nice looking um, scenes basically and you can utilize these for different uh, reasons really you can change like you can focus on a specific point here as you can see it blurs everything here and it kind of focuses 
on this part here, which would be cool for like, uh, you know, cutscenes and stuff like that. The next thing I'd recommend is kind of, I've mentioned this in previous videos, but it's don't be basic, right? So, you know, you have your, for example, you have your tree. This is straight up, as you can see. And then I've created a different variation of, uh, like that has a curve. And then you kind of just copy and paste these, resize them, rotate them, add, it adds more variation to your scene. If you kind of just do this, over and over and over again, which is see, I see this so many times in simulator maps, which drives me nuts. Uh, people just do this and expect the maps to look good, and no, just don't do that. You know, rotate, resize. You know, at least have at least two variations of the same tree. For example, I have a palm tree here, slightly curved, and then I have a palm tree here, which is very curved. With certain assets like rocks, I tend to make three variations, um, but you could probably get away with one because you can kind of just place them there, uh, you know, rotate or scale and all that kind of stuff, and then you kind of get like a different shape basically. When it comes to terrain for your maps, I recommend you utilize the flatten tool a lot. This is just my recommendation, you don't have to, but if you open your terrain editor here and then go to flatten, you can kind of select the point where you want to flatten it out and then you kind of just flatten it here. This helps a lot when creating different like elevations on your map because the main thing I'd like to mention is like you want to have verticality in your map and what that means is have different sorts of elevation or that kind of stuff. You don't want a flat map basically. For example simulators often just have a flat part and you just walk around to that same part which is very very boring recently I've seen they've started you know adding hills and all that kind of stuff you can climb up which is cool but you want you know you can see here there's kind of like a slope going up a lot of people really really forget to do this they leave everything flat you know you want to add forms of elevation you want to add you know little crevices and all that kind of stuff the smaller details look the best trust me so I highly recommend you you kind of add elevation and verticality in your map the last quick thing I want to mention is adding um, kind of crevices and stuff like crates you know crates are a very common asset you make so you press tab to go into edit mode press ctrl R to add loop cuts let's say you add three loop cuts down here three loop cuts down here and then basically you can select these, hold shift and select these uh, right here. So now if you press control and B, you can see it kind of splits it into two and then use your mouse wheel up to add a third one down the middle. And then basically if you select these in between here, like so. you can now press left alt and s to scale you can press left alt or s and left alt to scale and it kind of brings it in like this as you can see it kind of imitates like planks so if you kind of have like a uh, a crate or whatever you know it imitates planks really 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 easily that's going to be it for this video. If this video helped you out, make sure to like the video. Um, it's a quick little tutorial, you know, how to make a few things you may have not been aware of, really. Which a lot of people tend to miss out in when they're making games. But, um, yeah, this asset pack is for sale. The link is in the description. It's only $8 if you're interested. And, uh, yeah, that's it for me. Peace.